by and by, amen? <laughs> Sunday night at uh, Bible Baptist Church in Pensacola, Florida. I had been witnessed to and I prayed with two people, but I was still lost because I prayed basically just to get them off my back because I didn't know what they were talking about. I didn't understand it. And that, you know, it was just push, push, push. And so um, I had prayed. And the second one I prayed with was with the pastor. And I wasn't trying, pastor's wife, I wasn't trying to get her off my back but I just still didn't understand what she was talking about but then everybody thought I was saved and that was in December well then February came around and the preacher was doing a chalk drawing and he did the white throne judgment and he started writing down all the sins and I understood it and I was sitting there in the pew and I said God I don't know what to do um, because it was invitation time, and I thought, you know, if I went forward and they told me I couldn't do it because I already had, I knew I was lost. I, You know, all these things racing through my mind. Yep. And so I just said, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I know I'm lost. And right then, we were having the invitation, and the preacher said, um, you don't even have to come forward. You can get Amen. saved right in your seat. And so I prayed and asked Amen. Jesus Christ to save my soul. Amen. So, Amen. Sunday Amen. night. Amen. <laughs> Aren't you glad you don't have to come forward, amen? Oh, think about I will. That. Yeah. Think I... about that, right? <laughs> you know, it's good too, but on yeah. the same token, you know, um, hey, listen, you can get saved anywhere, amen? Yes, amen. yes. Anywhere, yep. amen? Yep. So, anybody else? Anybody I was else? saved in 1955. Amen. 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 On Ash Wednesday. <laughs> I know it's an Ash Wednesday because the preacher came in with the kids with the ashes on their hands. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> wow. So, anyways... I got a burden for lost souls right away, and I went home to my mother's house and witnessed to an old woman that was staying there. Amen. Amen. My Amen. mother told me I should be a missionary, mm-hmm. but I didn't. I'm Amen. sorry, I didn't. Amen. Well, you may not have gone overseas, but you're still a missionary. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Amen. Taking that gospel out. Anybody else? Anybody else? Well, my wife and I both got uh, saved at the same time. Amen. In 1977, after we'd been married, and this preacher come around, and uh, he was actually from a church of, <laughs> uh, church of Christ, you know. But I mean, he preached the gospel to us, and we sit down there with the Bible, and he preached the gospel to us, and uh, 
right after that, I mean, we were saved because we both changed, and our life changed ever since. Then. Amen. And, Amen. Uh, we did slide back, forth, you know, like everybody else does. Mm -hmm. And it's not been a perfect road, but you know what? It got a lot better when I got in this church. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Being in the right church makes all the difference. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it it's does. Been a fight. It's um, you know something that uh, we're we're blessed, yeah. we're fortunate. So. Yeah. And I was talking to Terry about Les Feldick, a guy I listened to on TV for a long time, for several years now, and he taught me a lot. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Amen. Go ahead, brother. I just thank the Lord. Uh, I heard the gospel, and I went to church, and they baptized me, and that's how I got sick. No, I'm just kidding. Rewind. <laughs> <laughs> that was after the Holy Communion. Right? <laughs> after he did the repenting to the Father. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was November 29, 1977. I knelt down beside my bed and, and I prayed and asked the Lord to save me. And, and I was changed. My family thought I got brainwashed by the Moonies. Because yeah. yeah. uh, there was such a change and they had no idea what Amen. was going on. So, Lord's good. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? It's good. Amen. Give the Lord credit. Amen. Yes. Amen. He deserves it. He's worthy of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, we'll go ahead and sing this next one. Hey, listen, if you got saved, it's all because of Calvary. Amen. amen. At Calvary, 139, amen. If you have an NIV, you can't sing this. That's true. <laughs> that's right. There's no Calvary. Anymore. How many others, too? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. At Calvary, amen. <laughs> Christ is here. 
Amen. Praise and I was just telling, uh, I was telling Ken, I said, you know, for my <coughs> testimony is, uh, and I got saved, and but the big things were, as I, as I even I look back, and, and I was telling him, uh, I didn't get saved at church. I went home afterwards, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know I had all those pamphlets. I started reading through it, and I was telling him the the one things that catch me is that. Like people had told me if God, if you want God, He wants you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nobody wants me. <laughs> you don't realize. Right. And uh, and then I, I was telling him, I said, you know, it's a big thing. He, he, you know, I was assuming that he would be at the church. God would be at the church. Yeah, come on. But he came to my mom's house that afternoon. Yeah, amen. Amen. Oh, that's what you were trying to say. Yeah. Uh, okay. Why would he come to? Why? Why? He's he's a king. Why would he come to my house? Right. Wow. Amen, Why brother. Why did he come to my mom's yeah, house? Yeah, you know? amen, brother. Nothing special about her house. Right. But he showed up. Amen. And I got saved. You amen. Know, that, that really <laughs> catches me. In that same house, my mom got saved. Amen. In that same house, my grandfather yeah, got amen, saved. Amen, brother. In that same house, my sister got saved. Amen. In that same house, on the phone, I had been leading kids, to, the other guys to Christ. Amen. And then I went into the world because of myself. Amen. I went into the world. I mean... I listened to everything everybody told me yeah. as far as, you know, and I wanted an excuse. And the greatest excuse they ever used on me was you're a divorced man because I, I got divorced when I was, I got married and divorced, I was unsaved. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then, you know, I got saved and the first thing, I, I was going along the way and the, the Lord called me to preach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I knew it. Mm -hmm. I knew he called me to preach and I was preaching up in for like the tower theater on the streets and, yeah. and I was out witnessing the people and then came the brethren. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And that yeah. killer then came the brethren. Yeah. You know? yeah. Our own people. Yeah. Yes. And the first, the only the what did they wanted I said, I think I, I think God wants me to preach. Oh you can't preach you're divorced. Right. right. And then they even sillyly said to me, You can't even go get married again. And I said, Man, that's even worse. Why did I ever get saved? Right. right. I can't do any. I mean, this is a bad man. If, if this is the way it is, what am I doing? Yeah. In it? Yeah. 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 And, uh, and but you know something when you're back when you get backslidden, you don't want to believe that stuff. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, coming back, my wife. When my wife got saved, it was uh, you know it's almost uh, the Lord used that. Not only to get me back into church because she was the push to get into church. Amen. It was uh, once we got back into church, she got up to sing a solo at uh, Watertown, uh, at Maranatha at Watertown. And um, we were in a bad church and we wanted nothing more to get out of there. <laughs> yeah. It was Calvinism. And um, my wife goes forward, she starts singing, I surrender all. Yeah, how about it? And I'm just sitting there, and all I can think of is, you're the one that should be singing this song. I remember. So she was she was a little struggling in this song, and I came walking up the aisle singing it with her. Remember that? Amen. <laughs> and I surrendered everything to Jesus. Amen, brother. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I mean, I didn't get saved. I was saved. Yeah. But that was the day I said, I don't care what yeah. the preacher says anymore. Yes, no that's it. That's right. That's it. I don't care. What the Baptist brethren? That's say. it. Oh. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I don't care about any of that. Right. I care about what you think. That's Lord. it. Hallelujah. That's it. Right there, bro. And um, you got it. And that's all I care about. That's the I remember side. going to my wife. I said, "You know, I got to tell you something. I was called to preach. I'm looking for my. I'm looking to serve God. If He doesn't want me to, that's fine. But I want to. Yeah. Serve the Lord. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. About. A few weeks later, I'm cleaning the toilets in that church, and I hear one of the guys turn around to me and say, there's somebody up here you need to see. And I had learned the guy's name about a week before down in Elbridge. And so uh, Rich Overton had said his name, actually. You need to go see him. And I said, ah, he's got a dumb name anyway. I don't want to go see that guy. <laughs> And uh, all of a sudden, that's truth. <laughs> I'm down there cleaning toilets, and I've got to tell you something. I was happy doing that. I, I was good. Okay, that's good for me. And uh, I hear you got to come up here and meet this guy. So I came upstairs, and there was this guy standing there, and he didn't look like much. And uh, 
<laughs> yeah, he could be watching right now. And he, I said, uh, well, who are you? <laughs> and he says, I'm Dewey Stewart. And I'm just looking at him like, man, I just heard about you last week and I wouldn't come see you. And you came here. Okay, Lord, what do you got to say? And Amen. he started talking to me. And uh, he told me he didn't want me to come to his church because he didn't want to look. He's just here to say hi. And I said, what? you have service the same day, right? I said, you have services Wednesday? He said, yeah. I said, I'll be there. He said, no, no, no. You can't come to church. I said, why? Said, you know, I was like, what, what do you mean I can't? I'm going to be there. And he says to me, he says, uh, well, I can't stop. You know, okay. I said, I'll be there. We don't have services on Wednesday down the Did so you I'll see be the magnet truck. on your truck? Uh, yeah, he said, I saw that. And plus, the I had Bruckman tracks. Oh, they kind of caught us together. Yeah. I usually carry a, one of them, the one that with me. Mm -hmm. But um, that kind of kind of hit it off between him and I. I went down to his church and uh, I went down to that church. We actually went Sunday night. Yeah. <laughs> we went way before Wednesday. We went Sunday night. I said to my wife, I said, we're we're leaving this church. We're going to that church. And I didn't never even went there yet. I went in there. We were we were so happy to be there. Yeah, we were brother. amen and cheering, cheering the Lord and everything else. Uh, my wife and I left there, and we just looked at each other and said, we're at home. Amen. Uh, I went the next week. I went down to uh, that the church I was at. I brought a big box with me. And uh, after services, I handed the box to the gentleman, and I said, here's the keys, the box, because I was a trustee there. And I said, uh, we have to leave. Amen. And... Uh, I told him if he wanted to sit down about it, I'd sit down about it, but I got to go. And uh, I left there, went to Dewey Stewart's church and uh, to, to the Watertown Baptist Temple. Amen. And uh, within weeks, <coughs> within weeks, I mean, it, I was preaching. Within yeah. weeks, yeah. I was out on the streets. Yeah, man, bro. Within weeks, we were, we were full blown into the ministry. Within a year. I'm pastor in the church. Yeah, I remember. And I got to tell you, it's been a, uh, an incredible journey, but I know something. God wasn't done with me yet. Yeah, I, and I may not have the big church that that uh, that I could have had if I would have said yes in the beginning. Maybe. I don't know. I got something. Yeah, Amen, brother. Yes. I got something. Amen. I don't even know what it is half the time, but I got something. Amen. And, uh, and I've I gotta say, you know, uh, I I'm never leaving. I'm never leaving with the North Country. Amen. I, we gave up our beach home. I was telling you, uh, we gave up our beach home for one reason. That was to serve the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No more we that we no more beach, no more nothing. No more up no, yeah, no like condo and everything else. And we <laughs> gave everything up just to serve the Lord. Amen. 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 People always worried, you know, well, you're getting good with the Bible. I'm not getting anything with the Bible. Right, right. I'm not going anywhere. I don't care who. You can have 500 people in this day to preach to. I'm going there. Mm -hmm. I'll preach to five. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. And we do. Yep. And you do. Amen. I'll stay here. I'll preach to five people. All I wanted out of this church, I wanted a group of people that would love each other. Amen. Yeah. And serve God. Amen. Amen. Love. Hallelujah. And Amen. I have it. Amen. Whether it's five people or twelve people, the one thing I can always say about governor and preachers come in the governor, and they always tell me one thing: you could say anything up at that pulpit. The people are just, just so into it. Amen. And uh, and I hear even my best friends say to me, "I would love to. I'd come back again." Amen. To governor, I'd preach at your church. Yeah, amen. And I say, yeah, yeah. There's a sweet savor here. Amen. Just a good sweet savor. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Brother. All right. Well, I mean, it's funny how that works. Um, see what works. Um, over and over, uh, people, when they get ready to do something for God, uh, somebody will come around and say, you're not qualified. Yeah. Do you know why they crucified Christ? He wasn't qualified. <laughs> You're not qualified to be the Son of God, so we're going to kill you. That's, 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 that's what it was. I mean, uh, you know, John Wesley, 
He had to stand outside and say, all the world's my parish. I mean, you, you did over and over, people, you're not qualified, you're not qualified, you're not qualified. And I had to deal with that with evangelism. It wasn't that I wasn't qualified, but, uh, the, you know, I, I called up guys and said, you know, I think God called me evangelism. I said, no, you're just discouraged or, you know, that's not God's will or whatever. And when you said that, brother, you, you said, I don't care what the brethren said, I don't care who said there came a point, and that's what when it was with you, there had to come a point in me where I saw it was God. I didn't need the brethren given their approval. I had to see that it was God's will, and that's what he wanted. And it took me a while because I couldn't, I couldn't believe I was an evangelist. It was like, yeah, I'm a brain surgeon, you know. It's like, you know, that's about how I looked at it. And uh, then finally, I couldn't run from it you know, anymore. I wasn't trying to run, but it was like, I can't do that. And uh, you're not qualified. I mean, I got that when I wrote the book Defiled. This, I had my one of my best friends go, Ken, come on, what do you know? You can't write that. And I'm like, that's nuts to you, man. But I knew God wanted me to write it, so I did. But I mean, that's, you get ready to do something for God. That's one of the, one of the things that's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be, you're not qualified, you're not good enough, you're not this, you're not that. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do right now. I don't, I don't want to take a long time, famous last words of an evangelist. Um, so uh, um, let's have a word of prayer. Father, God, I just thank you. I, I really got a blessing from that testimony, Lord. And uh, God, uh, what matters is what you want. And we're going to give an account to you someday, and uh, not the brethren. And Lord, I pray you to help each one of us here this afternoon to live our lives in view of the fact that we are going to stand before you one day and give an account. Oh uh, God, we're not, none of us are qualified. Right. Lord, by ourselves we know nothing. Lord God, we need you. You're, you're, you're our knowledge, you're our wisdom, you're our righteousness, you're our life, you're our savior. Lord, you're our everything. And God, thank you for salvation. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you'd give me discernment and wisdom now. Uh, God, I had, I, I don't know, just a number of things. Uh, and I just pray that you'd make me a blessing. God, I pray that you guide me according to thy perfect will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Um, oh, let's just look at it. Go to Matthew 14. Let's go Matthew 14. I I don't have a sermon on it, and it would, I would just be on a wing in a prayer, which sometimes the Lord does that. But I was telling uh, Pastor Deanna last night, uh, when Lot left Sodom with his wife and his two daughters, his wife looked back and turned into what? Pillar of salt. Mm -hmm. And I heard years ago, I heard a southerner go uh, in their southern drawl. She said she turned it. She, I can't even do it, but she turned into a cowlick. <laughs> and I, I was thinking a cowlick, you know, in the hair, you know. Uh, you know, a kid has a cowlick and it's always standing up, Dennis the Menace. And uh, then I realized what they're saying was a cow lick. And out west, we had salt licks, you know, the square five pound or whatever they are. I think they're five pounds. And or 15 pounds, something like that. And put them out in the fields for the cow to lick, you know, get the minerals and the salt. And I got thinking about that the other day, and I thought, you know, Lot went to Sodom because it was a good place for cattle. And when he left, those cattle ate his wife. Now that's something to think about. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> that, that's, you just got to stop for a minute and think about that. It's right. like, be sure your sin will find you out. You know, it's yeah. like, that. Now, that's not what I preach on, but I mean, that it was like, oh my, there's a sermon in that. There's a sermon in that. I know that, but I don't have it together yet, but that's, that is something else. All right, uh, Matthew 14, let's just look at it. Uh, Matthew 14, verse 22. 
<coughs> and let me just preach through it. And um, uh, Matthew 14, 22. And you know, you and I both know, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that uh, come to God must believe that he is. And there is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you're going to do anything for God, it's going to be by faith. Amen. Uh, if you're going to make any progress uh, in whatever you do for God, and I'm talking about everybody here today, uh, you're going to, have to do it by faith. Uh, there's no other way. And the only way to proceed and make progress in the Christian life and God's will for your life Number one, you got to pray. But number two, whatever you're going to do and it's God's will, it's going to have to be done by faith or it will not get done. Right. Two, you know, I don't know how many guys I've, over the years, and there's been a number of guys said, well, once I retire, then I'll be able to serve God. Mm. They never serve God. And there's been some that I've seen that have retired and they're like, all right, I'm ready to go, God. And God takes them home. Oh. You say, why? That's not the kind of service he wants. Uh, now, if you're retired and uh, you want to serve God, praise God. You know, I'm not trying to discourage you, but I'm just saying there's never a convenient time to serve God. It's going to take faith. Um, the majority of those books were written by faith. What do you mean? I had to stop all meetings. I had to stop. And there's another book that I'm looking at writing, and I believe the Lord wants me to write it. I try to pray and say, the Lord is this it. And I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be on the millennium. It's going to be on, uh, you know, what are you going to do for a thousand years? You've probably heard the sermon, the sons of Zadok, and I've had some people ask for it. I prayed about it, you know, that sort of thing. And it looks like, uh, God's given the green light and I'm like how am I going to do that and I mean that thing's going to be so intense and just and you get right in a book and I get immersed I, I'm just immersed in the subject and all that stuff and I cannot be in meetings no way it would, I wouldn't do justice on the meetings and I wouldn't do justice on the book and uh, the only way that I'll be able to write is by faith and schedule block sets of time where I write and no meetings and uh, no meeting, no income. <laughs> and it's like, you know what? God's there. Amen. God's there. Yes, he is. And that's how he wants it. Uh, evangelism, it's by faith. Uh, you can't, you, whatever you do is going to be by faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. They, uh, Say one of the way they build a bridge over a big canyon is they'll shoot a small thread or a small line across, get a gun, shoot across. And then once it's crossed, then they'll tie a little bit bigger one and they'll start pulling it across. And then they'll tie another bigger one and start pulling it across. And get bigger and bigger until eventually you got a big old cable. And you do another one, and then they can build a bridge, that sort of thing. And that's kind of like faith. Uh, you start out small, and uh, then you build on that. You build on that. You say, what do you mean? Well, you start out small. What's that? Salvation. Yeah. That's a real small <clears throat> amount of faith. And then you might build on that, and you join a church. Oh, no. I remember when I joined uh, the church, uh, First Baptist of Sonora. And I didn't know what a Baptist was. I didn't know what a church, I didn't know what a Bible was. <laughs> Honest, I'm not. I'm not exaggerating. And uh, uh, they said, uh, Ken, we're going to go down to church First Baptist here on Sunday. Do you want to come? And I had gotten saved, you know. And I, I mean, there was a fear. Just, and that my immediate thought was, Jim Jones, Jim Jones. Oh no, I don't want to get hooked into Jim Jones, you know. He said, I did, I didn't know. And I thought, well, okay, you know, I guess I'll go. And I went, it was an apostate American Baptist Convention Church. But 
we had Bible study and we grew and that sort of thing. And little by little, you know, you grow in your faith. And uh, this is a story of faith here. And uh, notice verse 22, and straightway Jesus constrains his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him on the other side while he sent the multitudes away. They're right in the will of God. Right. The disciples yeah. have been constrained by God. Mm -hmm. He says, what I want you to do, they've been moved, they've been motivated. He said, do this, and they do it. And they're right in the will of God, doing what God wants them to do. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain park to pray. When the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And they're doing what God wants them to do. They're, they're in the sea now. The wind's contrary. Uh, and one of the other, I don't know if it was Mark or Luke, said they're rowing and they ain't getting nowhere. Yep. They're going up against the wind and they're working, 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 and they're not making any ground. I mean, thank God they didn't turn around. Yep. You ever felt like that? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're trying to serve God and the opposition is so hard, you're like, I'm not making any progress. I remember praying and I said, but God, I'm not going to turn around. Uh, I'm still going to face it. And by your grace, uh, maybe I'll get strong enough I can get beyond this storm. And uh, that's, that's what they're up against. And uh, the wind was contrary. You get serving God, it's going to be contrary. Uh, it, it's, it's just, that's the nature. The Lord set it up that way. Uh, he set it up, and we are baptized in a world that's against God. Yep. And we are in bodies that are against God. And the God of this world is against God. And we have no strength. I mean, everything from our body around, everything is against God. And then God says, now live for me and do right. It's like, What? Are you kidding? I mean, there's no way. And he said, no, that's what I want you to do. Why? Why, 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 why did he set it up that way? Because it's extremely obvious who loves God. Very obvious. It, it's not rocket science to see who loves God because we're in an environment that's 100% against God. And it makes it very plain. It really does. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary in the fourth watch of the night. Well, that's, that's towards morning. I mean, they've been going all night. It wasn't like the Lord showed up, you know, at midnight and said, here, let me deliver you. Uh, he's been having a prayer time with the Father, and he knows what they're up against. But he's like, well, I'll be there in a, in a little while, boys, but i got to spend some time with the Father. Amen. And he's up there praying, and in the fourth watch of the night, uh, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Uh, you're probably about 4 a.m., something like that. Uh, 4 or 5 a.m., I mean, that's that's the hard time. You've been up all night. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is the Spirit, and they cried out for fear. And uh, you can be in the storm in the middle of God's will, and God show up, and you'll think it's the devil. I mean, here they are rowing. Here comes Jesus. And they're terrified. They're, ah! You know. And they don't recognize him. They don't know it's the Lord. It's his spirit. And then you got to admit, it would shake you up. Yeah. You're out there. The waves are crashing. You're rowing. You're, you're weary. And here comes somebody walking on the top of it all. Yeah. And it, whoosh, 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 
<laughs> you know, you know, you're wiping the, the water out of your eyes. Like, what's that? Am I seeing things? Oh, no. Ah! You know? And uh, it's the Lord. Well, they didn't know it was the Lord. They didn't think it was the Lord. Uh, I'm glad when the Lord shows up in the storm, I just hope I can recognize him, you know? Right. And uh, it's, oh, it must be me, you know? Maybe I'm not rowing hard enough, you know? And they cried out for fear, saying, Is the Spirit? Uh, they cried out for fear, but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. Now, I mean, come on. Amen. You know? You're in a ship. Water's coming in. You're exhausted. It looks like, you know, everything's uh, just about gone. And you may sink and lose your life. And here comes the Spirit and says, Be of good cheer. <laughs> what? <laughs> be of good cheer? Oh, yeah, right. I mean, be of good cheer. It is I. Now, that's a reason to be of good cheer. There it is. It is I. Be not afraid. When the Lord shows up, at least you can, oh, thank you, Lord, you know. And there is a reason to be of good cheer when the Lord shows up. He said, be not afraid. And if the Lord's on your side and you know it, you rest. You rest. When you lose that assurance, that's, yeah, come on. that's rough. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Now, look at that thing. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou. <laughs> Lord, if that's really you. In other words, Peter, I maybe he's not convinced. But if he isn't, would you have said, can I come to the water to thee? Yeah. I mean, if I don't know that's Jesus... Well, Lord, if that's really you, then bid me come to thee on the water. Now, you've got to admit, that's an amazing statement mm -hmm. and request. In the middle of this storm, uh, there's Peter, and he said, well, Lord, if that's really you, uh, bid me come to thee on the water. Uh, that, that is just an ad Would you have said that? I don't think I would have said that. Huh. I'm like, Great, Lord, get me out of this storm. Help. Yep. Not Peter. I mean, I just wonder if something else just, the Spirit of God got in him and, and he said that, you know, and then said, what did I just say? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, did I really say that? You know. But Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Can you see the rest of them? Peter. Get a hold of yourself. Are you crazy, man? Yeah, come on. You can't walk on the water. Come on. I mean, what? Did you hear what Peter said? The guy's gone nuts. I mean, can you imagine the reaction of them? They're just like, huh? But Peter's done go crazy. He's local. I mean, oh, wow. I mean, you know, it's just, he was all by himself in that request. Oh, yeah, Peter helps help, man. Yeah. You know? Nobody else going to get with him. <laughs> uh, bid me come to thee on the water. Not a lot of people want to walk on the water to go to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, they want Jesus to get in the boat. They don't want to get on the water and get to him. Right. right. And he said, "Come." Uh, that's a simple little statement. I uh, said, "Okay, come." <laughs> that's like okay. The challenge is on. All right. And they heard us. Oh no. Well, I wonder if Peter's going to do it. I bet they're thinking, uh, let's see, I mean, you know, and he said, come. And when Peter's come down out of the ship. Now, folks, and I know you know this. And maybe pastors preach this. I, I, more likely it has. But that ship was their comfort zone. That ship was their physical survival. Right. It was everything. That ship was preserving their lives. Right. And, and it wasn't a small ship. It wasn't real big, but you got 12 disciples, you know. I mean, it's pretty good size. But, I mean, the Lord says, come. And, and Peter stands up. And they're like, 
Not up here. Come on. You can't do that. What, what are you doing? Now, it doesn't say they said that. Maybe they're just like. But there came a point. You know what Peter did? Yeah. Come on. And he had to come down. Yeah. Out of the ship. Now that's, he had to put it, once he's over the side, he's committed. <laughs> it's done, man. Well, I mean, there's no, you know, life preserver, you know, none of that, man. I mean, he's going over the side of that ship, and uh, he's going to walk on the water. No, nobody told, Peter, you can't walk on the water. Men don't walk on water. There's none of that. There's none of that. I guess he uh, put his leg over the side and put the other one over the side. Uh, and as he was doing that, his eyes were on his Lord. Amen. Yeah. He's looking at the Lord. And in that, that hurricane, that all that going on, the, all that storm and, and the ship and, and all that stuff. In the middle of all that turmoil, everything grew peace. As his eyes and Jesus and he just, and the Lord began to smile. Wow, he's going to do it. He's, yeah, and the Lord's pulling for him. Yeah, come on. Yeah, all right. Come on. Yeah, come on, Peter. Yeah! I'm like, he's out of the ship. It's like, yes! Well, the Lord's excited about that thing. It's like, oh, and boy, he's just looking at him. And boy, it's, he's one with Jesus. Man, it's, a, it's as they say nowadays, it's a surreal time. <laughs> and oh, I mean, it is an amazing time. And when Peter was come down out of the ship... He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Amen. Now I got a question. How do you walk on water when the waves are ten feet high? <laughs> I mean, is that woo woo, you know, or <laughs> woo woo, you know? I mean, how do you walk? Or do you just skip across the top of the waves, you know? You're floating. Obviously, he was floating not on the water. You know, but the Lord's holding him up and uh, by faith, but, you know, I don't know, maybe he's, you know, just jumping each wave, you know. I don't know how that was. But all I know is he walked on the water and he's going to Jesus. And, uh, you know, about the time you get ready to do something for God, and I mean, it's like it's going, uh, then this big blast of opposition comes up. Come on. And you're like, wow, this is great. Man, we're in evangelism. We're in the ministry. We're serving God, whatever. Man, this is great. Whoa. Where did that come from? And it's this blast of wind. And it takes your eyes off of Jesus. And I'm like, whoa. What am I doing? I can't walk on water. My not, I, nobody's supposed to walk home. What, I, I must be crazy. And they hear faintly from the ship, yeah, you are, Peter. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, and you know, gravity comes into play real fast. And he's sinking. He's like, whoa, Lord, save me. And whew, Everybody. he just reached down. He says that, but when he saw the wind, Boisterous. Yeah, there's a blast there. He was afraid. And beginning to sink, cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Did you get that? Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus immediately stretched forth his hand and caught him. He said, oh, Peter, you're, you're a failure. You failed to make it. Uh, you blew it, Peter. But listen, none of the other disciples got to touch God. That's right. Amen. And none of the other disciples had God grab a hold of them. That's right. But Peter got to touch God and feel God. Why? Because he was willing to step out by faith. Amen. Boy, he steps out there 
And the Lord reaches down. And verse 31, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Now, lots of times it says, O ye of little faith, but uh, O thou of little faith, now you, I know you know this, but where's that put the rest up back in the ship? Right. They don't have any faith. <laughs> no faith there. Their faith is in the ship. You know, but Peter, he steps out. But I, the way I, in my mind, and I don't know, but I think the Lord was pulling for him. Yep. It's like, Come on, Peter. Yes. Oh, man, you're doing good. Lord, save me. And I think the Lord went, Oh, thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? It's like, oh, man, you were doing so good. He lifts him up. Gets him out of there. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying of a truth, Thou art the Son of God. When they got in the ship and everybody's mouth was open. Wow. That did we really see what we just saw? Right. And it was an amazing, amazing thing. But Peter walked on the water. He pleased God in a very personal, special way that day. You and I, we need to walk on, not walk on water. We need to walk by faith. We need to exercise faith as God uh, directs and as God leads. And, and uh, there's some things uh, just just now, I just thought of some things. And I thought, Lord, uh, help me. Because it's going to take faith and just things. And i got to see if it's really what God wants and stuff. But just, just praying about some things. But one of the greatest illustrations I've done is, uh, you know, those eagles. They'll build those nests way up on the cliffs, way up high. They'll build that nest, and oh, it'll just be rock solid. Just God gave them wisdom to know how to build it, and, and the wind's not going to blow it off or anything like that, and it's solid. And, and they lay their eggs and, and get those uh, eaglets up there that begin to grow. And they go and they get food for them. They grow and they grow and grow. And there comes a day, as they're getting older, where that mama eagle gets in that nest. Say there's about three eaglets in there, but now they're, they're getting, you know, teenager, you know, at a time, something like that. And she starts pulling everything up. Just starts just messing the nest up. And then them eaglets are going, Mama, what you doing? Mama, well, that's it. Mama... What's mama doing? I, I don't know, man. Man, I, that was my bed. I mean, I could nestle down in there at night, and it was so comfy. Now it's just the sticks, and I can't even go to sleep anymore. Mama, what are you doing? And she didn't to see anything. She just starts just messing that nest up, you know, and she's knocking them around and all that stuff. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. Man, mama, what has gotten into you? Did I do something wrong? You know, what's what's going on? You know, I'm like, man, I don't know. You know, they're talking to each other. Boy, they're just, you know, and then comes a day, mama's there, and, and one of them said, Mama, what's that look in your eye? I never seen you look like that before in my life. Mom, what you gonna do? Oh no, no, stay away from me. You know, all of a sudden, she kicks him out of the nest. And that eagle's going, ah! You know, it's trying to flap, you know, all that stuff. And it's going down there. Mama's looking over, and the other two are going, Whoa, Mama's gone crazy. And all of a sudden, pow, she just jumps out of that nest. <laughs> She's not catching that eagle. It's like, Oh, Mama, Mama, thank you. Thank you. You saved my life. And boy, she just soars back up that nest. Gets in there, thinking, Oh. And then the next one, phew, she kicks it out. What's she doing? Well, she teaches them how to survive, how to fly. 
That's what you should do. And there comes time when the Lord, there's times in all our lives where he wants us to step out by faith. It's not a presumptuous thing. I, I tell people this. You know, I don't know God's will for anybody. I've had a hard enough time to find it for my, myself. <laughs> but as a preacher, people ask, well, how do you know God's will? And I'll tell them this. I'll say, well, I say there'll be something on your heart. And it'll just be there. And you'll pray about it and say, well, yeah, I don't know why. And you might get counsel about it, and you pray and say, now, Lord, is, is that you? And, and maybe pray about it and see if it'll go away, and, and it keeps coming back. We're talking, it might be six months, might be six years. But it just keeps coming back. And I said, eventually, you get all the counsel you can, search the Word of God, you pray, but there comes a point the only way you're ever going to find out if it really is God's will is by faith you grab a hold of God's hand and you step. And you have no assurance in that what's my foot going to come down on to? Don't know. But you just know God's been dealing with you. You believe it's the Lord. It's not against the scriptures. So there comes a point you've got to step. And that's the only way you'll ever truly find out if it's God's will or not. Um, Peter is an amazing man. You say, well, I tried and failed. No, you would have failed if you never tried. Right. Amen. That's where it is. Let's pray. Lord, I pray, God, that you'd speak to our hearts and Help us, Lord, in these days of sufficiency and, oh, just we've got everything worked out. God, when you lead, give us the discernment. Help us, Lord God, to be Christians of faith in this age that we would be and do what you want us to do. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. good people we know they're in churches it takes a lot to step out on that water and say I'm going to take I'm, that's it I'm going I'm looking for the Lord out there amen if that's you Lord if that's you yeah tell me to come yeah tell me to come out there yeah I always I actually think it's funny when he says if that be you Lord who else is it <laughs> who else is it out there if it be you Lord but I think more or less it's, are you speaking to me? Yeah. You want me out there? And it's tough to give up everything you know. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. He knew that boat. He's a fisherman. Yeah. He knew that boat. And he had to step down out of that boat. Everything that he knew is in that boat. And he's up and down in that boat, going up and down. And then finally, he has to just let it go and say, I want nothing of this anymore. I want everything that I have is out there in that storm, just sitting there, just out there calling me. Yeah, yeah. You know the weird part about that? The moment he lets go, he knows nothing about what's in store for him right. out there. Right. It's, everything with the Lord is, I have no idea what's going to happen. Right. Yeah, that's right. And he won't let you know. That's right. You can't see into the future. Oh. You have to walk into it. Amen, amen, amen. That's how the Lord has it. That you, who would who would realize here you'd be today in this place? It's just odd. It's an odd thing, but I'll tell you what, it's a very good thing. It is. It's a very good thing. Yeah. I always said, don't worry about what this one said. You know, I was, I, 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 if you want to work for the Lord, He'll have something for you to do. Yeah. But that isn't the problem. Will you accept it? Right, right. Will you accept it? Small or great, will you accept it? Right. We all, preachers all think we're going to say, I'm going to preach to 200 people every week and it's going to be great. And everybody's going to, altars are going to be filled and everything else. Yeah. There's probably some great preachers sitting in places that are not much at all. Yes, yes. Not much at all. I think of guys like Mike Caesar. Mm -hmm. got 12 people sitting in the church. And people go, you know, he ain't got much, but I, I can tell you this. Man, is he? God gave him a lot. Yeah. God gave him a lot. You just don't realize how much he's got. Amen. God gave him a lot. God gave me a lot. Amen. I'm in Governor Lord. God gave me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I could be back in Pennsylvania and uh, running the course of the world. Yeah. But here I am in Governor. I preach the gospel every week. Yeah. And I, I preach to people and I take care of people. And I got families that, that act like I'm their family member. Amen. You know? And uh, I couldn't get that anywhere else. Even in the army, couldn't get that. Right? Yeah, yeah. But I got it here. Amen. You know, I could go back. I ain't going nowhere. This is where I belong. Amen. My family, uh, they love me. But I don't think they love me the way you guys love me. Right. And I just love being here. Amen. All right, let's pray this be dismissed. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for our time here. Lord God, thank you for the meal. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship. Thank you for the preacher coming in, Lord, getting a hold of our You used him to get a hold of our hearts, Lord Father. Uh, let us take it further than the door, Lord Father. Let us think of the things of thee, Lord God. Uh, what a beautiful day. I love you, Lord. Thank you. Let us be dismissed in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, he'll be here Wednesday, too.